In this tutorial, we're going to cover the user interface and navigation in 3DS Max. So like most 3D programs, it's broken down into a series of drop-down menus. Here you have your file menu, where you can open files, you can import files. One unique thing in 3DS Max is you can import files from a different software using Import Import. But if you have a file that's going from one 3DS Max file into another 3DS Max file, you can use the Import Merge, which will bring all of the parameters and history of that object into the new um, 3ds max file so 3ds to 3ds max would be import merge and other formats other um, software programs would be import import like autocad or rhino or something um, you can also send uh, this file to other programs if you're using autodesk softwares um, a few other things uh, you have edit you can undo redo um, we'll talk about some of these other tools later um, you can also create file, uh, create objects from the create dropdown, or modify objects through the modify dropdown. Or you can use over here on the right. This is the command panel where you, where you can also create objects, create lights, create cameras, and um, using the second tab, you can modify those objects you create. I tend to use this one over here, but it's really up to you. Um, there's a lot of redundancy built into the interface, so different ways of doing the exact same thing, which we'll see a little bit later. Um, different animation tools, different rendering tools. So when we get into rendering, we'll use um, render, render setup. Um, and then the most important thing when you first start a file is to go to customize and go to unit setup and just make sure you're working in the correct units. In this case, I want to work in US standard. It's really up to you. You could use metric units. I would just avoid using the generic units or the custom units. That way we know we're really dimensioning things to real world dimensions that we're used to. Um, especially as architects, so either metric or US standard. I'll go ahead and say OK. And then if we go further down, you can do some scripting um, and some other kind of things that are built in. Below the drop down toolbars, we have the main toolbar, and this is just icons that are used frequently. So undo, redo, again, it's redundant, so edit, undo, redo is the same thing there. Um, a little further down, we have our select tool. This is sort of like your escape tool, so when you want to get out of a command, yeah, you can hit this button here. Um, you can also select by name, so if you have a whole bunch of objects, you can select just the lights, for example, or, or, or a specific name uh, for an object. If you have tons of objects and you know the name of an object, it's really useful to do that. Different marquee selection tools. Here you have your move, rotate, scale, which we'll cover a little bit later. Um, different ways of, of pivoting around an object. So right now we're just using view, but when you start getting into the details of an object, you might want to rotate around the local coordinates of that object, for example, or other kind of coordinates that you start to create along the way. Uh, a little further down, we have our snaps. So this is our um, ob object snaps. If you highlight it, that means it's selected. If you right click on it, that brings up the snap settings. So you can change these. Um, we then have rotate snap next to that and some other snap features which we won't really get into. And then a little few um, more tools over here like our layer and um, object uh, explorer. These are also located over here on the left. This is your layer or object selection menu. There's two different ways of seeing objects in your scene. You can either do it by layers by selecting the little three sheets there. Um, or you can do it by an object hierarchy, and that, that will just list all the objects and then their relationships to each other. So it's really you know, useful sometimes to click between these two, depending on how you want to work within the scene. The next thing we have are the viewport windows. So you can see it starts with four viewports. Um, if the, whichever one you have selected will be highlighted with this yellow. If you want to minimize or maximize a viewport, you can hit this bottom right button, and that will maximize whichever viewport you have. Um, you have a few drop downs here, so if you hit the plus sign, you can turn on and off your grid. Um, you can also uh, do different uh, views, so um, a good way to analyze objects, like are you having uh, open edges, for example, if you're trying to 3D print, this will show you which edges are open. Also the orientation of faces, how many faces you have, so these can get really useful if you're, you're building complex geometries. Um, another thing that's uh, great is the next menu, which is the different uh, display views, so you can change it from perspective. Notice whenever you see a key here, an, a letter, that corresponds to the shortcut for that. So, for example, instead of going here and always choosing you know, top for top view, you can just quickly select P to go to perspective view, or um, L for left view, for example. Um, and so those are, just, those are just the quick shortcuts. So I'll just start with perspective and I'll stay in there for a second. Uh, the next drop down is where it says standard. This is um, 
just your uh, how you display your object. So if you want to see, uh, um, you know, illuminate the scene with default lights, you could do that. Or if you have uh, scene lights in your scene to really see how the lighting is working, you can change that here. Then you have the display type. So under wireframe, um, you can change this to, for example, default shading, which is what I tend to work in. And then if you go a little further down, there's an option that says edged faces, and that'll show the subdivision on the geometry. So 3ds Max is very different than a program like Rhino, for example, because it's a polygon modeler. You're actually modeling with surface polygons, which is different from modeling with NURBS, for example, where you're defining surfaces through spline curves and more mathematical formulas. This is defining it based on a series of faces. Um, so to see those faces, I always like to turn on edge faces so you know how subdivided an object is. So I like to use default shading and edged faces, but you can also change through other display types like clay um, or um, you know hidden line or whatever else you, you find in here. You can also do some stylized ones like ink or pastels. Um, the next thing we have is actually how to navigate in 3ds Max. So let's go ahead and just go create standard primitives box and then you just drag with your left mouse button let go and then go up and then click again and that'll create a box to actually navigate in 3ds max you hold down alt middle mouse button and that will allow you to orbit if you hold down just the middle mouse button you can pan if you hold down alt control middle mouse button you can zoom in slowly if you just scroll on the scroll wheel you can zoom in and out incrementally. So if you're doing big zooms, I use the scroll wheel. Um, by the way, if you hit Z, that'll recenter the scene on whatever object is currently selected. So Z is the, C, the keyboard shortcut for zoom selected. So anyway, you can um, use Alt, middle mouse button to orbit, and then Alt, control if you're just doing really smooth zooming in and out, and then scroll wheel to do big in and out moves. Um, and then hold down middle mouse button to pan. These tools are also located down here on the bottom right, but honestly, if you're working quickly in a 3D software, I would really recommend becoming uh, used to using your keyboard shortcuts. Always use a mouse when you're 3D modeling. You can't use a trackpad. It's just way too slow, and it's going to take you forever um, and give you a lot of headaches. Um, so that's how you navigate. Those are the big things. Remember Z for zooming. That's going to be really helpful. Uh, as you have a lot of objects built in your scene, you want to select an object using your select tool and then zoom to it and then orbit around that selected object. That's going to be the way you want to navigate mostly in 3ds Max. Uh, over here on the right, we have our command panel, which I already mentioned, uh, but on the first tab, we have our create. So everything you can create in 3ds Max is located under this first tab. You can create here geometry. Um, if I select the second one, that's shapes, like two-dimensional uh, things, like lines and rectangles or text. Um, the next one is lights, so any kind of lights you would create, cameras. And then there's some other things like helper objects and systems that get a little more complicated. Typically, you'll use the Create tab and probably the standard primitives to make your basic primitives. You'll notice if you select this drop-down here, you have other um, object types you can create. You can create like fully functional doors that are already built in with parameters. Um, or other kind of AEC, like foliage and railings. Um, that stands for architecture engineering. Um, and then you can do things like particle systems. And of course, uh, 3ds Max is also used for gaming and, and even in the film industries. So there's some kind of tools that are, are really built for those uh, uh, industries. But there's, they, they can be useful in architecture as well. So extended primitives are a little more complex, like torus knots. Uh, but you can just try different you know things and try to create them and see what happens. Uh, the next one is your 2D shape. So this is all your like 2D geometry, like lines. I'll just write, you can right-click to finish a line. Um, we'll cover that later. And then any kind of lights that you want to create. And if you have a rendering engine built in, like the default in 3ds Max is Arnold, but if I download V-Ray, I'll have V-Ray specific lights, for example, um, that will show up within here. Um, same with cameras. You can have uh, regular cameras, and if you have V-Ray or another rendering engine, those will show up there as well. So pretty much most of your time is stuck on these first two menus, the Create. And then Max is very different than another, other modeling programs. You don't type a lot in Max. You usually create an object, and then you modify the object to the shape you want it to be. So it's like clay. You put it into play, and then you adjust it into the, the actual form that you want. So you create an object. Then you typically you know, select the object, if I select this box, and then you can add all these modifiers to start modifying the geometry, which we'll cover a little bit later. 
Um, every object comes with parameters, so you can always adjust these. It's sort of inherently parametric. Even when you start modifying it, you can go back to the original uh, geometry and adjust those parameters here. You could type here if you want, so if you wanted 20 feet, um, that's what I mean by you create the object, and then you can change the, the dimensions of it, so 20 feet, 20 feet. Um, and then as I mentioned, the edge faces, right now there's just one face, one edge on each of these faces, but if I increase these, you can start to see that uh, it increases the number of faces on that surface. And that'll be really important later um, when we start to edit the sub-object geometry, like editing vertices and stuff. So again, you can always change these later on. So that's the command panel. We'll cover that a little bit more. Um, you can see as I've been working, my layers have started to fill out. Right now I'm just working on the default layer. But if I come over here, I can create new layers or delete layers or hide layers. Um, if I go to my object list, you can see it just lists the objects in order. Down on the bottom is our timeline. So later when we get into animation, we can start um, doing some uh, work here in the timeline. Here you have your X, Y, and Z uh, input windows. And this will be useful for if you want to move a very specific distance, which we'll cover later. Um, you can actually type values in there. Um, here's some animation controls like playing and rewinding. And then uh, again, over here, your kind of different orbiting tools. So that's the basic user interface of 3ds Max.